So you want to learn how to code. If you have the resilience and if you're relentless about learning how to code, your life will forever change. Now that kind of seems like an overstatement, right? In reality, learning to code is awesome. So in this video, I'm going to give you some ideas and things to think about when learning how to code. All right, so step one, you got to make a decision and then you have to take massive action. It's one thing to think about doing something and it's completely different to be decisive and to make a decision and be purposeful about doing something. We think all day about doing things. And sometimes, most of the time, we don't do the things we're thinking about. But if you're decisive and you make a decision that you're not gonna get distracted, that you're gonna be focused on learning how to code, you're gonna accomplish that goal a lot faster. I've said it in other videos, you have to dedicate time every single day with the sole purpose of learning to code. You have to have a schedule, you have to set up your calendar, you have to make it a priority. This means you're gonna have to turn off social media, you're gonna have to turn off the TV, you're gonna have to put yourself in a distraction-free zone. Because let me tell you, learning to code isn't easy, especially when you're gonna be a self-taught programmer. The amount of focus and attention you're gonna have to give in order to learning code it's a lot. And if you're not focused, you're going to be prolonging the whole entire learning experience. So one of the most important things you could do is you have to get yourself into the zone. And again, this means having your schedule, dedicating the time, eliminating as many distractions as possible, and making sure your environment is set up in a way that helps you focus on coding. Me personally, what I like to do is listen to some music, I put on my noise cancellation headsets, I turn off all notifications on my phone, and I just think about code. Now that was step one, making a decision and then taking action. The action part is easy, you just gotta do it. Again, it's not the same thing as thinking about doing something, it's making a decision and then doing it, taking massive action, which leads us to step two. And it's not really a step per se, but it's really an idea. What is your motivation for learning how to code? I mean, why do you wanna learn how to code? Are you looking to change careers? Are you looking to have greater control of your time? Everyone has a different reason why they wanna do something or why they wanna learn how to code. And your reason why it could be different than mine or anybody else's. But ultimately, you need to know your why. And your why has to be stronger than any distraction or roadblock that will get in your way. And trust me, it will. Learning to code is hard. You will have those days where you feel like you're not really accomplishing much. But then you're also going to have those days where you get to do something that you thought you never could do. Hence why I said in the beginning, you have to be resilient and you have to be relentless. All right, so step three. What are you looking to create with code? What type of projects do you want to work on? What problems are you looking to solve? Those are just a couple of things you have to think about before you even start the process of learning how to code. Because if you want to create an application for say iOS, or if you want to create a website, or if you're looking to create software, or you're looking to get into game development, you need to know in advance the type of projects you're going to be working on. And that segues into the next step, which is to choose the language or languages that you're going to be learning learning in order to create the project that you're going to be working on. Now, when it comes to applications for, say, iOS, you're going to be working with Swift. If you're going to be working with Android, you're going to be using Kotlin as the coding language. Now, for developing websites, there's a whole bunch of languages for that. But basically, you want to choose your language based on what you're trying to accomplish. Now, one thing you're going to find out very quickly is that every coder has an opinion on what's the best coding language to get the job done, especially when it comes to web development. Now, I think it's a good idea to get the opinions of other developers who are doing what you're looking to do. But at the same time, don't base your decision solely based on the opinion of one developer. Research from multiple sources what are the best coding languages based on the projects you're looking to work on, the type of work you're looking to do. For me, I use the LAMP stack when I'm working on websites. LAMP is the Linux, Apache, MySQL, PHP, Python, or Perl coding languages. And beyond that, for websites, I use HTML, CSS, JavaScript, Node.js, Gulp, I use PHP, and I use Git for version control. But when I'm looking for automation, like for example, when I'm editing my super long videos that can sometimes be over an hour long, for that, I use Python. Python is great for automation. Now, again, when choosing a language, there's a couple of factors that you can look at as well. You can take a look at what a developer makes with a particular language. What is the earning potential? What coding languages specific companies utilize in their workflow? And another key thing to think about is 
is what is the longevity of that language. Now, step number five, you have to choose your learning resources wisely. There's a lot of ways to learn how to code. You could read books, you could take online tutorials, you could watch videos, you could join a boot camp, you could read the documentation pages of a particular language. There's a lot of ways, and everybody has a different learning style. Now, if you have the money, a boot camp could be a great way to learn how to code. The reason for this is because you're going to be in a dedicated, focused environment where you're just going to be focused on coding. You're going to get direction from the instructor and you're going to get feedback on anything that you're working on. This will make the learning process faster. But if you can't afford a boot camp, don't worry about it. You can get yourself the right resources that's going to give you the equivalent of a boot camp and you could do it all from your house. Just make sure you choose the right book so you choose the right online tutorials. Basically, you want to have the right materials that you can make sure are going to guide you in the right direction. And then again, be focused, be purposeful in the process of learning to code. Step number six, follow the tutorial step by step. What you want to do is fully understand what's being explained by the instructor. A mistake that a lot of new coders make is being a spectator, reading the book or watching the videos casually versus actually working through the code. Step number seven, first learn how the syntax of a coding language works and then learn about code logic. This is like learning your ABCs, learning the definition of words, and then learning how to put those words together into sentences and paragraphs, pretty much the grammar. In code, this means learning about variables, functions, objects, classes, and other language constructs, and then learning about data structures and algorithms and how to put it all together in a logical format. And this segues into step eight, which is learn how to think like a programmer. It's a step-by-step -step process. Think about what your end product will look like and then break it down into smaller parts. Think about how an end user is going to use your code. Pretty much you want to think about every single step and every part of the process of your program. There's a lot more that goes to this and I have a video on how to think like a programmer. Definitely check that one out if you want to learn more about that topic. And now step nine, think about how you can create something different. You don't want to get stuck just doing tutorials. That's how you end up with a fixed mindset and that can make it hard for you to think differently and to create something unique. I first definitely recommend that you go through the tutorial step by step, fully understand it, and then once you have that part of it done, you move on to the next part, which is to refactor it. Try to make it do the same thing, but in a different way. Can you optimize the code? Can you make the code do the same thing, but with less lines of code? Can you make it more secure? Those are just a few things you can consider when you're trying to refactor or change up the code that you're working with. And then with everything you learn from the tutorial, make something completely different, something unique. And that takes us to the last step, step number 10, learn by doing. This is the most important part. Don't be a spectator. Don't just be a consumer. If you want to learn how to code, you have to be a doer. And ultimately that means you learn by doing. You gain knowledge by doing. You'll accomplish your goal of learning how to code by actually coding. As the Nike slogan says, just do it. Actually, maybe I should refactor that statement a little bit. Just code it. Now's the time for you to go check out some of my other videos where I share my insight on how to become a developer and tutorials on how to code. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, comment down below, make sure you share with others, and I'll see you in the next one. Happy coding.